Hello, my name is Erin Anderson and this is my class of sixth grade students and we are going to be doing the bird beak adaptation uh, lesson today. So we are going to be trying different bird beaks to see what they can pick up. Hey, thanks for the introduction here at North Wayne Elementary. We're going to be doing an activity about animal adaptations. And Ms. Anderson, your kids and, and me and you, we have certain adaptations that makes humans the dominant life form on this planet. Let me show you what some of those are. Boys and girls, an adaptation can be two things. It can be a body part, a body part, or it can be a behavior, a behavior, okay? Now, what are some body parts that we might have that makes us better? Yes? Um, our talking. You are so right. Most kids don't get that, but because of our speech, because of our speech, we can talk, we can communicate, we can give directions. I can say, hey, go around the corner by that rock. Miss Anderson, chase the deer that way. Kids, on the count of three, throw the rocks. And then we take home deer meat to eat. Mm -hmm. Speech played a big, important role in the development of humans. The next thing that makes us pretty good is that we have a body part. Anybody know what our, the most important body part we have? Our heart. Uh, but all animals have a heart. I like what our you're brain. saying. What? Our brain. Our brain. Our brain. Our brain. Our brain is the largest brain per animal ratio ever. <coughs> we have a big brain. You know how we got a big brain? We got a big brain by doing one more thing. Everybody hold up your hand. Oh. This is a posable thumb. This thumb right here allows us to pick things up. It allows us to pick up spoons. It allows us to make things. So our thumb, believe it or not, our thumb is a body part that gives us a great adaptation advantage. We were able to talk, hunt, make tools, and eat cooked meat. So there's something about eating raw meat, you don't get enough energy, but when we discovered to eat cooked meat, our bodies got bigger, stronger, our brains got bigger over many, many generations, and those are adaptations that help us. Let me ask you this. If you were in the woods and a grizzly bear was coming at you, what adaptations does that grizzly bear have? <laughs> yes. <laughs> he has a big snow, so he smells you a long time. What else could he do when he's coming at you? Yeah. Um, he, he's probably going to eat you, right? <laughs> what is he going to use to kill and eat you? Yes. His mouth, strong jaws. What else? He's got claws this big that's going to tear you apart. Now, your claws will not win. Your jaw will not win. And guess what? You could try to run from him. He'll run you down. Guess what? You could try to climb up a tree. He's going to climb. Your best bet, your best bet is to have a really good tool to protect yourself, like a car. <laughs> To get out of there. So that's our adaptations. Different animals and plants have different adaptations. So, you know, we talked about grizzly bears. A behavior of a grizzly bear is in the fall, they eat, 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 and they get fatter and fatter. They store up the fat. Because what is an adaptation of behavior that a grizzly bear will do during the winter? Sleep. Sleep or hibernate. You know, they just didn't decide, hey, we're going to go take a nap. That is a behavior that's been passed down. So claws, fur, teeth, all adaptations. Speech, hibernate, and an adaptation you guys have is going to school. Those are all behaviors that might help you. Okay, on the first box, like if I had a, if I had a bamboo skewer, I'm gonna write bamboo skewer right here, and then I'm gonna draw a picture of it like this. See the picture of it, pretty easy to do, right? Draw that. If you have a clothespin, then you would write, no, you would write clothespin, right? C L O T P clothespin. And you would draw a picture of the clothespin, right? So do that. If you have a 
close spin, draw a picture of a close spin, and that leaves one more. What's the other bird beak model we might have? Spoon. A spoon. So if you have a spoon, write the word spoon, and then draw a picture of the spoon. Okay? Draw your model. This is not a real bird beak. The game we're going to play called Bird Beak Adaptations is we're going to look at three models. We're going to look at a spoon, we're going to look at a clothespin, and we're going to look at a bamboo skewer. We're going to use these three models as a bird beak adaptation. And we're going to use a cup, a cup as your stomach. So go ahead and draw in here a cup, and so that's the stomach. And that's the beak. Okay? All right, I'll give you about a few seconds to get that. Take a look up here. Now you see some bird examples. What I want you to do now is look up here and try to find a picture of a bird that looks like, and I'll erase these so you can see it better, a picture of a bird that looks just like your model. Try to pick one that's close to your model. What do you think? Oh yeah, if you have that one maybe. Oh, the one at the bottom left. Bottom left, oh, spoonbill. So this one might be good for a spoon. Yeah, we could do that one. This one might be good for a skewer. And then the one a close pin. A close pin, sharp, that, or maybe one of these right here. There's one, one up right there. there. Go ahead. There's one up there, uh, all the way, go up a little bit more. Uh, to the left. There, right there for um, a skewer. Skewer, excellent. Yeah. Okay, go ahead, take a look at these, pick your bird, and draw it. Okay. Uh, I can't draw. Just draw it, just draw it. Miss Anderson. Can you look on the paper? I can't draw. Nine. Eight. Seven. Okay, there's some really good drawings in the room. So we have a model, and then we've tried to find a bird that looks like that. One time I was out and I saw, there's something really strange. Here's what I saw. I saw a bird that looked like this. Its beak kind of came like this and went down. And then the other beak kind of went like this and went up. And I thought, wow, I thought, that poor bird. I thought, you know, what, that, that bird, something must be wrong with that bird. You know, it's like, uh, you know, I thought its beak was like, its beak was criss-cross like that. And I thought, boy, that bird, something must be wrong with that bird because look at its poor beak. Its beak was crisscrossed. I thought it, maybe it was, it probably was going to die because what could it eat? But then I looked it up and it's called a crossbill. And then I thought, okay, if a bird has a beak like that, there must be something that it can eat with a beak like that. I thought, that's weird. How can it pick? It's almost like, it's almost like scissors. Like the beak looked like that, and when it opened its mouth, it went like that. I thought, that must be really weird. But then I learned that a crossbill eats pine cone seeds. A pine cone, this is a pine cone I brought. My wife doesn't know I borrowed this this morning. <laughs> a pine cone, this one is after the seeds have fallen out or have been eaten. Under each one of these little flaps, I'll pass this around, there is the seed. This is from a pine tree, right? It's green and it starts to dry out and the seeds fall out. A crossbill can land here, put its beak inside of there, flip open a seed. So here is a beak that's matched to a pine cone. Now that's an adaptation that gives it an advantage. Okay, we're going to play a game now. It's called Bird Beak Adaptation. It's a game. I have three rules for any games, or actually it's a science model. We're modeling real life. So here's the thing. You have on the floor a yarn circle. 
you're going to sit down and behind you you're going to put your stomach or your cup inside of here this is like the forest this is the forest that's filled with all types of animal foods bird foods now they're not real bird beaks and they're not real foods if, as a matter of fact if you take a look here's what the food items look like foam. so you see foam pieces beans, beans um, toothpicks and dried marshmallows and beans and those are going to be our food items got it food items here are the three rules. Rule number one. Rule number one. Play fair. It doesn't matter how many you get. We're trying to learn something about which beaks would be good at picking up food. Rule number two. Have fun. And rule number three. Be safe. Okay? So I expect you to be able to answer some questions about this activity. So, be fair. Have fun, be safe. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna sit, oh, you're gonna stay at your desk and do these? Okay. Put your stomach next to you. You can only use one hand, but let's have a little advantage. Here's the deal. How many people are right-handed? How many people are right-handed? If you're right-handed, you have to use your left hand to pick up. If you're left-handed, use your right hand. That makes it a little more challenging. All right, let's get ready to set this up. All right, so remember everybody, the rules today are, the rules today are, you will play fair, you will have fun, and you will be safe. I'm going to say ready, set, go, and I'll go, you will start. Ready, set, go. Remember your, no, your spoons have to, your stomach has to be on the table. you to look in your stomachs which is your cup right we had two minutes and we'll see which beak was good so count count how many beans you have and put it right here the number right here beans how many toothpicks how many pieces of yarn how many marshmallows and how many pieces of foam go ahead and count up each of your numbers and put that on your chart Okay, write it down. All right, so you have counted up all of the food that you have gotten, but food in the forest is not equal. Some foods that you picked will hurt you. Other foods will help you a lot. I'm going to write the value of each piece of food that you picked up. So every bean that you got is worth three points. Every toothpick is two points. Every piece of yarn is half a point. Every marshmallow is one point. And every piece of foam is minus two. That's right, that's right. Think about the pollution that we have put into the forest. I know. That foam is the pollution you guys have put in there. No. My goodness. Yes. I didn't get any beans. You ate all pollution. As you can see, some of the students were a little surprised when they found out that foam was a negative. But 
that's how it is with adaptations. An adaptation might be an advantage, but in some cases, it could be a disadvantage. Okay, so many of you are realizing that the different foods are, are affecting you differently. Different beaks were better for different food items. Think about the beak that you used and what items it was good for. Remember that even though that this is just a model, you can use this to think about how birds in real life and other animals and their adaptations can survive in the wilderness. Think about how their adaptations affect them in their life. Okay, so remember, you need to answer the questions on the back of your sheet. You need to figure out which models are the best adaptations for which foods. You need to describe your bird beak model and you need to describe how your bird's beak is a positive adaptation to pick up food. So you're going to answer those questions at the bottom of the back of your worksheet. Make sure that you understand how this applies to real life. 